God intended for your mind to work, I can almost guarantee it, and you can probably take it to the bank, that your life will be a whole lot different if you understand how your mind works. Let me say that again. Your, whole, your life will be a whole lot different if you understand how your mind works. Because if I found out one thing is that the devil can't, he cannot, he cannot destroy your future because your future has already been set. He can't destroy it because it's already been done. But he can get you off track and off focus. And when he gets you off focus, then you can't fulfill your destiny or, or your dream or, or whatever God called you. Why? Because your, 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 your destiny is still there, but you're out of focus. You're not in line with God's word. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. So, for those of you that, that if you've heard it before, they say, God, you know, the devil can come in and destroy your future, that's a lie. Because then whatever Jesus did on the cross, it was to no avail to you. Because when he was on the cross, he said it is finished. I mean, everything that I needed to do has already been done. That's it. He went, to the, he went up to heaven, sat down at the right hand of the Father, and you didn't get him up. That's it. It's done. Amen. Amen. I'm already preaching. I don't even know. <laughs> so, your future cannot be disturbed or destroyed, but you can be distracted from it. And his job is to get you distracted enough to hold you back so you won't get... See, because when you're distracted, all you're doing is you're holding yourself back from getting to where you need to be. Ooh. Yes, that's good. Amen? Amen. So, what, 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 thank you, Lord. Hold on. Let me see. What, what it took in the people of God three days to get into the promised land, it took them 40 years. What did you do? Because the enemy distracted their mind. Yes. So, when Joshua came in, God told Joshua, three days. Three days. Pack up three days. You guys are going into the promised land. Joshua said, he did not argue. He said, we're not going around this mountain 40 years again. So he told the people, pack up and in three days we're going in. Yeah. We're going yes. in. Yes. Right? right so what, took, what it took in three days, it took them 40 years. Why? Because they got distracted. How did they get distracted? The enemy came in and started Throwing things in their mind. And the first thing that the enemy brought to their attention was, it was better off where you were at. That'll preach to somebody right there. That by itself. It was better off because you had food. You had everything you needed back in Egypt. But he didn't tell them that they were still in bondage. And they still had to work from sun up to sundown. And they still had to be under somebody's guidance and they were still going to get whipped and beat mm -hmm. if they didn't do what they told them to do. Yeah. So what he did is he started bringing back into the... And then if you get distracted enough, distracted enough, what happens is you begin to look at your past and say, man, it is better over there. I didn't have as much... How many of y'all have ever had that thought in your mind that said, man, it's been, it's been, it's been better where I was at? <laughs> and I was partying... I, had, I always have money. I always have friends. Yeah. I, I believe that every one of us in this place have had that thought in our mind at one point or another. Especially when all things are going bad. Because yeah. the first thing that we want to do is always, and the easiest thing to do is always to go back. Yeah. It's always. That's the easiest thing to do is always go back. And we say, forget it, I ain't going to church. The thing about it is that when people say, forget it, I ain't going to church no more, they're not only leaving the church, but they're also leaving God. That's right. Because they leave God because they go back to doing the things that they used to do. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't get any better for them because the Bible says that when you lose fellowship with God, once you know Him, seven spirit words of what you had are coming back into your life. So if you were dealing with some kind of addiction in your life, guess what? If you had trouble with one, imagine seven more coming into your life. Mm. Come on. I didn't even hear it. Remind me, this is, this is not, my printer is not working, so I had to use uh, the television here. I mean, uh, the iPad. So, we have to understand how the mind works. The reason that you are going through what you're going through is because you're still stuck in your mind 
of what the past is. And you'll never be able to get into your future. You'll never be able to get into your destiny and what God has for you. Until you renew your mind. Amen? We have to renew our mind. Hallelujah. God always wanted to take his people into the promised land. The promised land in the Old Testament was a piece of land. The promised land in the New Testament, in our time, is the blessings of God. God always wants you to be blessed. His, his, his purpose has not never been to keep you broke. That's your mindset. Yes. That's your mentality that takes you back. Mm -hmm. Because I, I came from a church back when I was younger that told us that we had to be poor because Jesus was poor. That's where I came from. And they told me that I had to, it, it was okay for me to live in a rundown because Jesus was poor. Because if I had enough money, then I, you know, I would lose my salvation. And it had nothing to do. Because money is not bad. Money is not bad. Let me say it again. Money is not because I'm here like looking at me like a deer in the headlights. Money is not bad. It's the love of money that is bad. It's when you love money more than the money. When money controls you instead of you can... That's right. That's right. You gotta tell your money where to go. Don't let your don't tell your money. Don't let your money tell you where it's going. You tell their money. You you assign your money to a place. You go in here and you ain't leaving there. That's right. That ain't even that ain't even that ain't even Somebody needed to hear that. So when you when you learn how to control your mind, when you learn how to tell your mind what to do. And not let your mind tell you what to do. Then your life will be a whole lot different. Because when you walk in the spirit. You tell your mind what to do. When you walk in the flesh. You tell your mind what to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Come on somebody. Help me out here. Amen. So. Jesus died to redeem us back to God. He died so that we can have. You know when we were created. We were created with a good mind. I mean we had it all together. But old Adam, that old Adam messed us all up. And, and I don't know if it was Pastor Rudy said this Sunday. He said, I'm going to have a talk with Adam once I get into heaven. <laughs> because he messed us up. He messed us up. He ate. Well, actually, I'm going to talk to both of them because Eve made him. Lies. No, actually, Eve did not make him either. Take that back. Because she didn't put a gun in his head. All she did is put it in his hand. His choice was to either eat it and say, no, I don't want it. Because God told me not to eat it. <laughs> Pastor, the devil made me, the devil didn't make you do jack. You did it on your own. <laughs> we we got to stop blaming. The devil made me do it. The devil did not make. Pastor, I fell into sin. There's no such thing. You thought yourself back into sin. You don't fall into sin. The devil did not make you do anything. You did it yourself because you thought about it before you did it. That's right. Mm. Okay, where am I at? I know this stuff is on my nose. Why am I going this way? The Lord knows, huh? The Lord knows. The job, the job of the enemy in this world is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's his job. And one thing that the enemy cannot stop you from is getting saved. He can let you get saved. That's no problem. It's staying saved. Mm -hmm. He has no problem into getting you saved. His job is to try to come in and mess with your mind so that you, once you're saved, because once you're saved, you're saved, but your mind's still acting like a fool. Yeah. Yeah. You're still acting like the devil. Come on, somebody. Don't, God, don't knock holy on me. Come on. You get saved, but you still act like the devil. Why? Because you got saved, but your mind didn't get saved. That's right. Your wallet didn't get saved. That's why when you pick up the offering, you still get mad when they talk about money. Why? Because your wallet ain't saved yet. There he goes again, talking about money. You have to renew your mind. We are not to be conformed to this world, but we have to be transformed. You have to be transformed. How? How do you renew your mind? By the word of God. So if you don't have no word, you can't renew your mind. So you still think like the devil. 
you still think like the way you used to be. If you were a player, you're still going to think like the player. If you were a dealer, you're still going to think like a dealer. If you were a drug addict, you're still going to think like a... Come on, somebody. I'm going... Amen. You can still think like that. Why? Because your mind is not renewed yet. Because just because you came up here and say, oh, thank you, God, I accept your behind. You go back, I guarantee you, you're going to go back to smoke again. Because the habit's still there. It has not been broken. Your mind has not been renewed. Help me out, somebody in here. Amen. I say, that was quiet. <laughs> can, can I drink some water? Yes. Yes. I'm still going to drink it. <laughs> Oh, thank you for putting it up there. This is what the enemy does. The enemy will always try to fence your mind. And just like we send, God sends angels to guard you and protect you, the enemy also sends angels into your um, uh, uh, demons and spirits around you so that you will not receive what God is trying to get you. Amen? Amen. So we have to understand this. We have to understand that God wants the best for you, but some of the re some of some sometimes you can't handle what God has for you because you're not trained to receive it. You're not trained for it. You might say, "What do you mean, Pastor? I'm not trained?" Because your mindset is always thinking poverty. So if God blesses you with something, you don't know what to do with it. So the best thing to do is your mind is always waste, waste, right? Let's go, let's go waste that money. Let's go waste that money. Because some of you, if you got money in your pocket, it's like, it's, it's like fire in your pocket. You want to waste it. Amen. Amen. Right? Come on, somebody. Yes. So, you, you, what, do we, what do you mean I have to be trained? You mean I have to be... No, you have to train your mind because the old mindset is always thinking spin, 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 spin. Your, mind, your new mindset says no, no. We have to learn. We have to learn how to be how, how, how to be good stewards of what God has blessed us with. Jesus. Amen. Amen. So that's when you transform your mind. You have to be a good steward of what God gives you. Because if you can't handle what God is giving you right now, how can you you can't ask him for more? If you can't handle what he's giving you right now. That's why we say, you know, when 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 God, if you, if you only give me a thousand or two thousand dollars, but if he can't trust you with the hundred dollars to give you tithe. Right. Come on. Come on. Amen. So your mind has to be trained. Man, if only God can give me a million, please. You, you don't tithe up for ten dollars, <laughs> which is only a dollar. And you want a million dollars, which is going to be a hundred thousand dollars off of that million. That's going to hurt. If a dollar hurts you. Mm -hmm. So, the thing about the devil is he tries to come in into your mind and he tries to bring into your mind and tell you something different. He comes and tells you something that God didn't say about you. And the thing about it is that we believe him more than we believe God. Come on, somebody. We... we we believe the devil more than what we believe God. God tells you you are the head and not the tail. And you see yourself always at the tail. Yeah. Uh -huh. God tells you that you are above and not beneath. And you always see yourself in the valley. It's okay to go through the valley. Don't stay in the valley. Right. Don't, right. don't pitch a tent in the valley. Don't buy an apartment in the valley. Pass through it. Get out of there. Amen. 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 I tell people, oh, pastor, I'm going through hell. Good. Just don't stay there. That's Just right. go through it. That's fine. That's right. But don't stay there. Because when you stay there, it's when all the rest of the stuff will come into your life. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. So he'll always come in and bring things into your mind. And he'll tell you, you know what? You're, you're not good enough. You'll never amount to anything. You know what he comes in and tells you? He'll tell you, you know, if you are a male, he'll tell you, you know what? You'll always end up like your dad. Have you ever heard people tell you that? And you're just like your father. You're no good for nothing. You dad was a junkie, and guess where you were? You going the same way. So the lie of the enemy will always come in and tell you stuff that God did not say about you. And, 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 and you know, you come in and tell you, you know what? That's in your genes. You're gonna be like that. You know what? It, cancer's in your in your in your in your blood already. You're gonna have cancer. You're gonna have lupus. You know what? Nobody in your in your family graduated. You know what? Everybody in your family 
uh, got a divorce, so guess what? You're headed for a divorce way before you even get married. They're already speaking things into your life. So when you get into a marriage, you already have that in the back of your mind that sooner or later you're going to get a divorce because everybody in your, in your family already got a divorce. Come on, somebody. Somebody in your family already got cancer. So in the back of your mind, any little pain that comes into your mind, into your body, you already think, man, could that be cancer? Because my mom and my dad and everybody had it. Could that be diabetes? Because everybody and my son. So you begin to, your mind begins to play with you. And all of a sudden, you begin to feel things that, that are not even there. Come on, somebody. And you begin to speak into your own body with your mind, saying, man, I might have this. And the more you speak of it, then all of a sudden, something begins to create inside of you called cancer or called diabetes that was not there before. But you begin to think about, my God, begin to think about these things. And you think about yourself being poor and, and not having enough and always living in a rundown house. And there's nothing wrong with it. But don't stay there. I mean, listen, you, you, you have the, the hood mentality. And you say, I'll never amount to anything because I'm from the hood. I'm from the other side of the tracks and nobody's ever came out successful. Well, you'll be the first one to come out of the hood successfully. Come on, somebody. You'll be the first one that owns your own business. You'll be the first one that graduated. You know what? If nobody graduated, I'm a graduate. And nobody stayed married, I'm staying married. And nobody had money in my family, I'm going to have money. You need to begin to speak into your own life and believe what God has said about you. Hallelujah. So we have to stand either on God's word or you have to stand on the enemy's word. Either one. He tries to come in and he tries to stop you by putting so many things in your mind. When you are in here, you have to grab every word that comes out from the pulpit, from the, pulpit, the, the word of God and grab a hold of it because those are good seeds. And you grab those seeds, and when you grab those seeds, you grab them and you root and you plant them in your heart so that way they can produce yes. 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 something positive in your life. Because we're so quick to gather, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing how people can believe the newspaper, but they don't believe the Bible. It's amazing how people can believe a doctor rather than the doctor of doctors. So... We have a hard, we have a hard time. Listen, this Bible here has been here longer than the, any newspaper That's ever right. written. That's right. This Bible here has been here longer than any doctor ever existed. My That's God, right. this Bible here has been here before any knowledge in this world was ever formed in people's mind or in their life. Yes. So you make the choice: who do you believe? What's in here, or the person that just barely we can say was born yesterday? Because I'm here to tell you, doctors are good, and you have to go to the doctor sometimes. But don't depend on him. Don't make don't don't let his last his words be the last ones you hear. That's right. That's right. That's right. You gotta consult the Lord. Yes. Well, you got cancer. Thank you for doing that exam. But let me consult my doctor of doctors. Oh, no. The one that I don't have to take a Medicaid and I don't have to take no insurance. And, and the one that will accept me whether I have insurance or not. If I have the Obamacare, well, he don't even care. I don't care. I'll go to my doctor and let him tell me what I have. The thing about it is that we let the doctor have the last word. And when he tells you what he sees in the nat oh my God, what he sees in the natural, in the x-ray, you... and, and I, I prayed for this girl. I want you to go pray for this girl. Um, as a matter of fact, it was, it was one of my cousins. She's having problems in her back. She's having problems in her back and she can't walk. She hasn't been able to walk. She walks, but she walks real slow. And, and uh, two weeks ago, my wife and I went to go pray for her. And uh, we sat down and began to talk to her. And she said um, that she had gone to this doctor. And the doctor pulled out the uh, x-ray, and on the x-ray, the doctor showed her how her, uh, her lower uh, disc were so shattered. She had four discs in the back of her uh, uh, spinal cord, the, I mean lower back, they were shattered. The doctor showed her the x-ray, said, you see these right here? They're shattered. We can't do nothing to them no more. So you're going to have to get injected. And you're going to have to have an operation done. That's the only way we can probably try to go in and try to see, see if we can fix it. So she said, she called 
when she received that report, we prayed. We had people been praying for her. Then, when we were there, she said, I went to another doctor that I got sent to. She said, the doctor in, in New Braunfels, I think it was, she said, the doctor up there in New Braunfels told me that I have all my this. And he showed me the x-ray. And he had the other x-ray. She said, but I don't understand. She said, I know my discs are messed up and broken because I saw them. As a matter of fact, this, this doctor in New Braunfels did not show him the one, the one that he uh, did over here. He just knew about the one that was torn up in Seguin. He said, she said, I saw the one in Seguin and I saw it with my own eyes. That they were all broke, they, they were shattered. I couldn't, they, they couldn't replace them. Now the doctor in, San, in, in New Braunfels says that they're all there and I don't need surgery. I said, well then praise God. Praise God because you're healed. And she said, but you don't understand. I saw the x-ray and they were shattered. And, and, and he said I needed surgery and, and, and I could not be the same. But I go over here and he tells me there's nothing wrong and I don't need surgery. I said, well, who are you going to believe? She said, I don't know. I said, well, this one's telling you and you prayed. Did you not pray? Yes, I prayed. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. Then why can't you believe that God fixed them and you don't need no surgery? That's right. She said, the reason I can't believe it is because I saw the ones that were broken with my own eyes and I haven't seen the new ones. I said, but you don't have to see it. You just have to believe it. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And I stood there with her for about 45 to an hour trying to convince her that God had already healed her. Amen. Oh my God, hallelujah. And I left. And she didn't get convinced. Not that she got convinced, but I couldn't get her to believe that God had already healed her. So guess what? She has to live like that. Why? Because in her mind is a picture of that extra. I think that if she would have seen the other x-ray, maybe her mind would have changed it because then her mind would have to battle between two x-rays. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So, it brings me back to this. God shows you your x-ray. God shows you your future. And then the devil slaps you with his thing that he has for you. And your mind is still battling whether to believe what God says because it makes more sense what the devil says than what God is saying. Mm. I'm about to run. I'm about to run. The, the season you're in right now, it makes more sense to believe the devil than it is to believe God. Because everything the devil is telling you is what you're going through right now. Oh, I'm not getting together. I get it. See, the devil's telling you you're broke and you don't have not one cent in your bank account. So it's more easier to believe him than it is to believe God that says you are prosperous, you are rich, and you're not poor. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It is better, it is more easier to believe the devil because you have pain in you. You have you have just seen the x-ray, and the devil tells you you have cancer. It's more easier to believe him than it is to believe God when he says that by my stripes you've already been healed, but you still feel the pain. My God, you still feel the pain. You still feel something. You're not walking straight, so it's a lot easier for you to believe the devil than it is to believe God. But see, you believe in the devil because based on what you see, my God, naturally, but you believe God, you have to believe God based on what you see spiritually. I got because what he did in the end, hallelujah, what he did 2,000 years ago, he said it's already been done. My God, and what you see, what you see right now, it's only temporary. My God, you might not have two cents to rub, hallelujah, but I'm here to tell you that if you stay faithful to God and if you continue to sow what you've been sowing sooner or later, you'll see a little bud springing in from the ground, hallelujah, and you'll see something grow, hallelujah, out of which you had nothing, but you said, God, I'm going to trust you anyway. God, I got to pay this, but I'm going to trust you anyway. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to sow it down, and you're going to bring it back to me. Press down, shake it together, and running over, shall man put back into your bosom. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Mm. Good work. 
Jesus. Mm. I think I'm just going to close this. Mm. I read nothing like this. Devil is a lie. That's right. Woo! My goodness. Mm. Go to Mark chapter 4. Verse 14 and 15. He's fencing you. Some of you need to break that fence. My God. Matthew 4. I mean Mark 4, sorry. Mark 4. The sower soweth the word. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm the sower. And I'm sowing the word right now into your life. But then verse 15 comes. And verse 15 tells us, and these, <coughs> these are they, <coughs> excuse me, by the wayside, where the word is sown, but then when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. When? Immediately. So, the moment I speak a word, if your mind can't conceive it, you can't receive it. Right. The enemy comes in and steals the word. Uh -huh. yes. And then, the thing about the enemy is that he doesn't only come in to steal the word, but he comes in to steal the word and to sow his word. Mm. Mm. He knows how to sow. Mm -hmm. yes, he, does. he knows how to sow. That's right. She's been sowing in your life for many years until you got saved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So when I throw the word out to you, if you don't receive it and say it's mine and it ain't going to go nowhere, the enemy can't steal it. But if you're still thinking about yesterday, if you're still thinking about how you're broke and your life's been all messed up, and you're still thinking about that person that left you 20 years ago, and you're still expecting them to come back after they've been married for 25 months, God. They've been married already. they got kids already. And you're still praying, God, bring them back. Let them go. If they're not with you, if they left you, that means that they were supposed to be with you. Come on, somebody. Just let them go. Just like, bye. Bye, please. Just let them go. Kick them to the curb. God's got something better for you, That's but right. he can't bring nothing into your life until you let go of That's right. Yes. Amen. That's right. So, the enemy comes in, and, and I'm sowing in the word, and he comes in, and he snatches the word from you, but then he puts in his word. See, because when we, when we speak about, you know, uh, bringing your offering and your tithe, we sow the word, and then the enemy comes in and says, you can't give it. You ain't got no money. You, 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 you gotta go pay. What? Aren't you gonna go eat after church? Yeah, those ten dollars you're gonna give. Yeah, that's the, that's that hamburger and that fry you were gonna waste at McDonald's. So how? You, so then all of a sudden, listen, you got, this is real. So all of a sudden, while the preacher's talking about that, your mind's going McDonald's or God? McDonald's, McDonald's or God? Oh. Are you are you seeing what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. And he comes in and tells you, and we speak a word, and you're healed, and you love a son like this, and you remember what the doctor said, and you remember what the symptoms are, my God, what the symptoms are that the doctor told you, and I'm telling you that you're healed, and you're like, oh no, but I still feel what the doctor, and oh my goodness, I think it is. <laughs> so the enemy comes in and steals the word. Yeah. Then he sows his word. Yeah. And when you leave this place, you leave not with God's word, but you leave with his word. And then you, if you, you go out of this place and you leave this place worse than when you came in. Yeah. Oh, church was boring today. It wasn't boring. It's that the word never got to your mind. Right. The word never got to your heart. That's and right. the enemy took that word and put his word in it. And his word, my God, is destruction. His word is kill, steal, and destroy. That's his word. Pretty soon, yes. you're going to get destroyed. Somehow, some way. If you keep on listening to the devil, you're going to get destroyed. That's right. My Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Are y'all right? Amen. So he comes in and he tells you all these things. He said the sower, so it, it, it's not. See, the thing about it is that people leave churches because they blame the pastor. It's not the pastor's fault. Well, pastor ain't got no word. 
Your mind can't conceive it. That's right. Your mind aborts everything of God. Mm. Mm. So it cannot receive it, and if it cannot receive it, then it cannot bring forth any fruit. So every time the word of God comes in, you abort the word, and then the enemy puts in his stuff. He puts in his stuff in there. Eve couldn't conceive the word. So she aborted the word, and the enemy came in and brought another word into her life that almost it was almost identical to God's word. Because the enemy came and told Jesus the exact same word, but he just worded a little bit different. Doesn't the Bible say that, you know, he can turn this in stones into bread and if you just jump down, didn't he say that he'll send the angels? Wait a minute. Jesus said, let me tell you the way it is. First of all, you're telling the word about the word. Yeah. Oh, yeah, get it. Y'all get it when y'all go home. <laughs> in John 1 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with, God. and the word was. God. So when the enemy came in, Satan came in to try to give him word. Jesus just stood back and said, Wait a minute. I'm the word. That's right. And you're trying, trying, trying to tell me, me? <laughs> really? Are you that dumb? Yeah. Let me tell you how it really is. See, you have to be able to be, you have to be bold enough to tell the enemy, let me tell you what it's written. Yes, right. What it said about yeah, me. That's right. Because what you're saying about me is totally different than what God is saying about that's right. me. I'm out. That's right. I'm out. So you either you believe what the enemy says or you believe what God says. Yeah. But he said that when the sower sows the 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 the, the, uh, the word, he says immediately. See, you can have an immediate blessing. Or you can get robbed immediately. And sometimes you don't even know it. You don't even know it that the enemy came in and snatched that word from you. Because he is sneaky. He's tricky. He tried to come in and steal. And he'll try to rub in his word in your life. And he'll make you to believe his word. So you have to retrain your mind. Look at your neighbor tell him you've got to retrain your mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is good. All the time. Thank you, Jesus. So what happens is that we have trained our mind. See, our mind gets settled. And you get into a zone. Have you been in a zone? Your mind gets into a zone. So from when you were born to you got saved, so many things were planted into your life that were not true so your mind got accustomed to hearing all that stuff mm -hmm. your mind got accustomed to hearing that you're not good enough your mind got accustomed to hearing that nobody in your family has ever done this what i said earlier so that's all your mind knows so when you get saved and you start hearing something different what you, than what you have been hearing for years it's kind of hard to receive it mm -hmm. If they've always told you that you'll never amount to any good and that's all you know, but then they come in and say you are the apple of God's eyes, it's kind of hard for you to receive that because you've always been mistreated. Because every man has ever always treated you like a dog, so you don't think that there's a man on this earth that can treat you good. And when they tell you that God loves you and that God cares for you and that he died for you, it's hard for you to sink that or, or take that in because you cannot trust anybody. Because your mind has already been settled. That's why the Bible says that we have to put the old man away. Yeah. Put him to death. Why? Because the old man thinks about that. Thinks about the hurt and the pain. And the enemy will always try to bring you back to that spot. Because if you don't renew your mind, your mind has the capability to go back to where it always was. Yes, sir. Yes. Back into bondage. Yes. That's right. Back into defeat. Yes. So we have to understand this, that whenever we come to the Lord, we have to retrain our mind. That's why when people, you know, I hear people say, no, don't go to that church because they're going to wash your brain. They're going to wash your mind. Good. That's what we want to do. <laughs> because eventually, up to now, what you've been doing has not been working. That's right. Come on. That's Come on. Right. Don't go to that church because they're going to they're gonna try to change your mind. Good. That's what I want. Amen. Amen. I've been living a hell, a hell of a life. I've been, I've been broke. I've been beat. I've been backstabbed. I've been talked about. I've been mistreated. Yes. yes. 
my mind doesn't know anything but to go back to that mess and drink that stuff and get with that guy again and, and continue a cycle. I need my mind to be changed. I need something different. Good, let them change my mind. Amen. But people don't understand that. Oh, you understand yeah. that? Amen. So your mind is in the zone and it, 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 and it gets settled. And then when you come to God, you have to read the word so that your, word, your mind can be transformed. So that way you can begin to be like Christ. Because some of you are not like Christ. You like the Antichrist. <laughs> and you know what Antichrist is? What is Christ? What did I tell you Christ is? What is Anti? So you're against the anointing. You're against the movement of God. You're against what God is doing. I don't want to go to that church. Why? Because they jump and they holler and they speak and all this other kind of weird stuff and they run around. They're crazy. I don't want to go. Let's just, just go right here and let me give God a dignified praise. <laughs> well, we'll go ahead and give God a dignified praise. But what he's done for me, ain't nobody has done for me. That's hey, right. That's what right. God, That's where right. God brought me out of, nobody else. That's and right. if I can't That's speak right. it out, I'm going to run it out. If I can't speak it out, I'm going to jump it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to throw microphones. I'm going to throw babies around. No, I'm not going to But I'm going to do whatever I can to let him know I am grateful for what you've done in my life. I'm grateful for where you brought me up. Because you know what? No A, no triple A, no A, hey, A, no, no. Nobody has got me out. I went to those things, but they didn't help me out. They they put me back in there. I got so depressed coming out of those things. I went back into drinking. Mm. Yep. Mm. Amen. Amen. Oh, this will help you. Ain't gonna help me none. You're making me get back into that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Y'all still here? Yeah. So you have to retrain your mind so you won't go back into that comfort zone. And the only way to retrain your mind is to retain the word. So when the word gets sown, the word. If you leave it in the... See, you cannot get a seed, go outside of your yard. First of all, we have to make sure that the ground that you're sowing in is fertile. Yeah. Because not every ground is. Yeah. Right? So you have to make sure that once you know that it is, you sow the word. You, see, you put the seed in the ground. Now, you're not coming back the next day and take it up. You have to know how to work the seed. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to work. So how do you work a seed? When you plant a seed. Anybody ever plant it? Anybody? You, you got to make sure that there's no weeds around it. You got to make sure that it's got the proper sun. The, 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 the proper heat. You got to make sure that you water it. Mm -hmm. Come on somebody. Help me out here. I'm, I'm not. I'm not a... If you give me a seed, I might not know what to do with it. So you don't plant it. And, and, and the, the Bible says that the farmer waits. He, he, he takes care of it. He waters it. Makes sure it's got the proper light. Goes around, makes sure that there's nothing hindering from when it comes out. And then he waits. Because he knows that what he threw in there is going to come out. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's going to come out. So what do we do? When the word is spoken or when the word is sown into your life, then you have to water the word. You have to nurture the word. You have to make sure that it's got the proper sunlight. Well, what are you, what are you talking about, Pastor? You just confused me. No, what I mean is that once you get the word in you, then you do your own study. That's right. That's right. You can never believe everything everybody says. Come on, somebody. That's why I tell people, come in with some pen and pencil and write some stuff down. Because when you go home, you're going to need the word. That's right. And the only way that you're going to water it, you can go back and say, let me see what Pastor read and make sure that he read the same thing. Because it might be up there. Maybe Sister Jessica's typing a wrong thing back in the back. And they probably got together before service and they started talking. Just write this on there. No, you got to do your own study. At some point, you got to do something yourself. Come on, somebody. He's not just going to come in and drop it in your lap and say, here you go, a million dollars. No, he said he gave you the ability to create wealth. Yes, right. Right. Amen. 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 He's not going to give it to you. He gave you the ability to create it. That's right. Amen. That's why he said, Amen. him that need, uh, uh, lacks knowledge, he said, ask God and Amen. he'll give it to you. That's right. Knowledge for what? To create wealth. I just want God to give it to me. <laughs> it like that. No. Uh, man, uh, if it was like that, 
It'd be easy. <laughs> I don't think anybody would be in here <laughs> if it was like that. Right. Come on, somebody. So you have to water the word. You have to water it. Y'all make me work hard today. <laughs> I have to preach hard when y'all don't say amen. I think I gotta wake you up or something. Amen. Oh, you awake now? Yeah. And <laughs> right now you look like a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's all good. You have to work the work. See, the word works yeah. by works. The word is not going to come out of here and automatically have legs and go do the work for you. It does not work like that. The word works by faith works by you got to put it to work. You got to put feet to your faith. And you got to believe God. And it, has to, it starts where? In your it starts in your mind. And you have to believe God. And you have to trust God. And you have to believe that what God is saying about you. Listen, grab a hold of the word. Yes. Don't let the enemy snatch your word. Because can I tell you something? When you leave this place today, the enemy is right there, right outside waiting for you. <clears throat> and some of you are probably going to come and say, Pastor, you don't know what happened. I mean, I just we just left church. I think it was a couple of years ago. Was it a couple of years ago? We had an event. We had our... our um, uh, draft was it the draft when oh, yeah. Christy? Oh yeah. When Christy had the accident, we had the draft. We were here doing doing an event for our Easter Easter uh, event, and we were here in church. And right as soon as uh, Sister Jessica's daughter and her sons they left in a truck, probably about not even ten minutes, got into a real bad accident. Why? Because the enemy will always try to come in. And tell you something different than what you heard back here in the back of this book. Always. And that's why it's hard for you to believe it. Because what he's telling you, he's making you see it. But God says, don't go by what your eyes see. You, because we don't walk by sight. Because your eyes can be deceiving. Because your eyes only see the outside. But the spirit of God sees the inside. See, you look at you look at him. And you, man, look at them. He's, he's all fine. The girls, yeah, he's all fine. Look at him. He looks. Look at oh, green eyes. He told her, Look at the muscles and all that. But inside, come on, somebody. Inside, can be big old monster waiting to rip your head off. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm telling you. See, because you're going by what your natural eyes can deceive you. Oh, you don't understand, Pastor. Look at, mm, mm, look at, and the girl, so you look at a girl, and you think that she's all this, you know, beautiful girl, whatever, and you don't know that inside, it's, it, it's a Jezebel waiting to come out and destroy you. Come on, somebody. You don't know, and, and, and she be walking all sexy or whatever, and you're looking at it, like, oh, she got my eye. Now, she got your mind. She got your eyes. She got your wallet. She got your mind. She got everything on you, and she going to leave you broke. Because you're going on the outside appearance, and that's like God told, told Samuel, Samuel, what you looking at? You're looking at the outside. You're looking at the big old David's brother. He said, don't look at the outside. He said, I look at the inside. Because when they brought David, he's like, this little boy here, you want me to anoint him king? What a one way to anoint this one, because this one looks like the king, right? He looks big and muscular. He goes, no, because he don't know how to be a king. That's right. See, I've been training this little boy out there with the, with, with the sheep out there when I brought him the lion and the bear and, and I've been training him for such a time as this. So, people can see different things about you. And that's why they call you what they see. And some of you don't like it what they call you because you get upset. But they're looking at their, the natural eyes and God sees, I'm looking at the natural, I'm looking at the heart. Amen. I'm looking at the heart. Because God never works from the outside in. He always works from the inside out. Yeah. Amen. Ooh, Amen. Jesus. Amen. That's a word for somebody that's looking. <laughs> Are you looking for somebody? Don't go for looks. See, um, um, help me. Help me, help me, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I believe it was Jacob. 
Jacob wanted Rachel. But he got stuck with his sister. See, at night and in the dark, everything looks good. So he went to bed with Rachel's sister thinking that it was Rachel. But when he woke up in the morning, And I don't know if it's ever happened to you that, you know, you just kind of one night stand that you think that you're all drunk and all messed up and stuff and all drugged up. And you go to bed with the person that when you're all drugged up and all drunk, they look like, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 the beautiful model. And then you get up in the morning and you look around like, oh, my goodness, why did I just get it? <laughs> well, that's what happened to Jacob. When he got up in the morning. And he turned around and he was like, oh, he got like, oh, Rachel, my goodness. He looked at Rachel's sister. And the Bible says that she was cockeyed. She, the Bible says that she had a lazy eye, meaning that's what it means. It had a lazy eye, meaning once she was walleye. You know what walleye is? Yeah. Anybody know what walleye is? Walleye is one eye looking at you and the other one's looking at the eye. So when she turned around, when he turned around and looked, he's like, whoa, that's not the one that I'm supposed to be there. <laughs> you have to be very careful because your mind see the enemy wants to entangle, entangle you with the Jezebel the enemy wants to entangle you with that pretty uh, uh, because the Bible says that he disguises himself as an angel of light so he'll probably put somebody there and say this one will do the trick and, and can I tell you something he knows your life also he knows what you used to like so he knows when you used to, if you used to like the tall ones. He knows if you used to like the short ones. He knows if you used to like the chubby ones or the skinny ones. He knows all of that stuff. So he's going to bring you the right one that you used to like before. And he's going to pass her through you to see if he can get you and snare you back into that mess. Because he knows if I can get a Jezebel into his life, he will never fulfill what God said about. Yep. Mm. Oh, man, that's good. Mm. That's good I told you this. I told you this two weeks ago. You can't wait on your Boaz or you settle for dumb. So Bo, Boaz is B-O-A-Z. Boaz was Ruth. That was that was that was Ruth is 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 savior, right? B-O-A-Z. Get this right. So God has your Boaz. But you're settling for the other ones. His family members. Broke. Dumb. Beat your... All that stuff. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? So the enemy's job is to try to entangle you with the Jezebel. And, and, and in your mind puts all this stuff about you. And you imagine yourself, you know, dating so-and-so. And everybody's going to be happy because I'm ne I've never dated somebody pretty as you. But you don't know that that's a Jezebel in there. That as soon as you say, I do, my God, even before you say, I do, because God always puts red flags all the time. Mm -hmm. See, some of you got entangled with the wrong people, and you had red flags. You had the, the you know, what I told you Sunday, this is the emergency broadcast center, and whatever, and there's a the thing, and you hate that when you're watching your favorite TV show or your favorite sports, all of a sudden, it's like, dee, dee, and it goes up there, and it tells you, this is only a test. Well, God, the Spirit of God, is that I preached a message one time that called the, um, the, the umpire of your soul, meaning the Holy Spirit. The umpire is either going to call it out or save. The Holy Spirit will always going to come in. That's out. you got to get her out. Well, that's saved. Let them come into your life. Or you got to kick them out. 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 And, all, I would, and sometimes we become like the players and say, no, that was saved. No, that's saved. God, the Holy Spirit said, that's out. you got to kick it out. Yeah. Yeah. And you get upset. I don't know if you ever seen baseball, but the people get upset and then they start throwing dirt at the at the at the umpire because they're so upset thinking that they're gonna change the mind of the umpire. The umpire's telling you that they gotta go, you gotta let them go. Right. And when you don't listen, you're gonna have to suffer the consequences. That's right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So can you tell me why how do we get all the way over here? <laughs> 
Holy Ghost. It's what's in your mind. If it if, if you if you don't pay attention to the flags that are going in your mind, the bombs that are going in your mind, you, you you're in for a big surprise. Amen. Mm -hmm. Some of you heard something tell you, mm -mm, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You know, I, I was watching the Medea movie, and, she's, and, and, and somebody was going to get married. She goes, if you get married, I'm going to stand back in the back and say, don't do it, don't do it. You know, the Holy Spirit, when you're up there and you're trying to entangle yourself, the Holy Spirit's got that big old sign saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't get entangled with that person. If they're, not, if they're no good, they're going to take you down the drain. And you're like, oh, but I'm in love. Look at all the little, you know, cupids going around, throwing all kinds of flicks. Those are not cupids. Those are spirits of the enemy That's trying right. to throw you fiery darts. And you think it's a cupid because he yeah. painted it, Ray. Come on, somebody. That's He's right. telling you, don't do it. Don't get yeah. entangled with it. Yeah. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Listen yeah. to what the Word of God says. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Don't let the enemy come in and steal the Word. Wait, God's got somebody for you. He's got somebody for you. If you learn to wait. He's got somebody for you. I tell the people, you know what? Why don't you just tell, tell, tell the Lord to give you patience. Don't jump too quick. Don't jump too quick. Let God bring them to you. You renew your mind. You get right with God. Can I get an amen somebody? Yeah. Don't let the enemy come in and fence, put a fence around your mind and say, don't can we see the word of God? No. The Lord says that he's going to put a hedge around you. Yes. And, 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 and you, see, he puts the hedge, but you're the one that decides what goes in. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. He gave you the key. That's why when you see the picture of Jesus standing by the door, there's no door now. Why? Because he can't open the door. That's right. The knob is on the other side. You gotta open the door. He gave you the key and he says, whatever you let, whatever you give access into your life, that's what's gonna, that's, that's the way your life is headed. Yes, sir. Whatever you let in is gonna help you or either gonna mess you up. And whatever you, you don't want, same thing. You have the ability to say no. And yet that's why he gave you a free will. But then he gave you, he, gave, he said, he said, choose this day whom you will serve. Yes. That's Joshua said, choose this day whom you will serve. That's for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The Lord tells you, choose life or death. Gives you an option. And then he tells you what to choose. He said, choose life. Yes. Can't have it more plain than that. Choose life. Why do I want to choose life? Because if you choose death, you're going to be separated from me. That's right. Forever. That's right. Come on, somebody. Amen. So, don't let the enemy put a fence around your mind. It's time that you begin to break that old mindset. Yes. It's time to break it. What they taught you when you were young, some things are good, but you, you are mature enough to understand what is good and what is not good. Amen. 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 I can't come in here and change your mind. That's your job. I can just tell you what you need to do. But it's up to you to do it or not. I, you know, I, 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 I've done counseling with people and, 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 and then I go back and say, well, did you do what I told you? Well, no. Okay, then. Do you expect any different result? Why? Because you didn't do what I told you to do. Have you read the Word? No. Okay. Have you, have you prayed? No. Have you prayed together? No. Okay, then I'll come back when you guys do all that stuff. Yes. Amen. Amen. A lot of people don't like to hear the truth. Because it hurts. Yes. It hurts. But the truth is good. Because yes. the truth brings healing. Yes. And the truth brings a, a, a freedom into yes. your life. Because yes. we don't like to hear it. That's why a lot of people, sometimes people don't call me. Why? Because, see, a lot of people... They, 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 they don't, can I tell you what, what a lot of people don't do? A lot of people don't call my wife. They don't. You know why they don't call? They call me instead. You know why they don't call my wife? Because my wife don't mess yeah. around. That's good. She's going to tell you right. exactly what the Lord says. And she's not going to sugarcoat it. She's going to tell you exactly how it is. 
And if you like it or not, she'll tell you just take it up to the Lord. And, and, and it's not that I don't, I don't uh, uh, sugarcoat it or that I sugarcoat the word, but, you know, I, 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 I just, I try to look for ways. And my wife will tell you straight out, this is what the word says. You either do it or you don't. It's up to you. Why? Because sometimes we don't have time to be messing around with that stuff. Because the Bible says that when you were kids, you thought as a kid and you acted like a kid. Now that you're old and grown up, you're still acting like a kid, so we're still going to treat you like a... <clears throat> and after we tell you what we have to tell you and it hurts, we're still going to give you a lollipop. <laughs> or bribe you with some candy. Because the Word says that now that you're an adult, mature, you, you got to act like this. And there's some adults that are not acting like uh, like that, like like mature. They're still acting like kids. So what do I do? I have to go to Walmart or or H E B and go buy me some Pampers. Sisters, and buy me some Pampers, sister Priscilla, and some some Pedialyte and you know some pull ups and all this stuff because sometimes that's what we gotta give them. Some of you can't handle the meat, so I still gotta give you milk. Some of you choke on whatever I'm giving you. Pastor, that's too hard. Okay, then I'll bring you a glass of milk next time. <laughs> but when you get a get the meat, you get strength. Yes. Amen. Amen. So you decide what comes into your mind. I can't decide for you. Moses took the Moses took the people out of Egypt, but Egypt never came out of their mind. That's right. So they were always in bondage. Because mm -hmm. they were all, in their mind, they were always thinking about Egypt. That's what they said, let's just build a calf. That's what we did back there. And it worked. The enemy wants you to believe that it works, but it doesn't work. Man, this is for good luck. There's no such thing as good luck. We don't go by good luck. We're blessed. You're either blessed or you're cursed. You know where the word luck comes from? Lucifer. Lucifer. And now they just made a TV program called yeah. Lucifer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what they do in this program is they make the devil look like a nice guy. Mm -hmm. The one that comes in and solves all the problems. Yeah. Mm. And I see people on Facebook say, man, I can't wait to watch this program. <laughs> <clears throat> so they're accomplishing what their goal is, is to try to get people to believe and it's okay. That's with the devil. It's okay. The devil protect me. That's a lie. That's a lie. And pretty soon, you're going to destruction. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Don't you enjoy the word? Amen. You can... You can live a life of freedom or you can live a life of bondage. It's really up to you and not to nobody else. You can choose from this day and say, you know what? I ain't gonna live like this no more. Or you can continue to go around the mountain again. See, the thing about God is that He'll let you go around the mountain as long as you want to. He's not gonna stop you. Well, why not? He's got no, because that's your choice. My God. He already told you what you got to do. Right? Same thing he told Joshua. He told Moses. Same thing. Two different kinds of leaders. One obeyed, one disobeyed. So, you choose. God says, I want to prosper you. Then the enemy comes in and says, you got to prosper. Look at the job. You didn't get paid six dollars an hour. How are you going to prosper now? You got all these bills. How are you going to prosper? How, how are you ever going to... You gonna, all your life, you're going to live paycheck to paycheck. So the enemy tells you. So you settle. And you don't believe that God can use somebody to come in and bless you. So therefore you live in bondage for the rest of your life. So the people that went into the promised land, the Bible says, was a whole new generation. The people that died in the wilderness were the ones that came out of Egypt. That still had Egypt in them. And the new generation believed Joshua. Because when Joshua said, Three days packed up, we're leaving. You know what they said? Whatever you say, we're going to do. 
Because if God tells you, we're going to believe you. And they went into the promised land in three days. And they conquered. There were giants over there, but they still conquered. And they still received the promised land. So, there might be obstacles. There might be situations where God is telling you to go. But remember, He guides your steps. He, they're ordered by God. So there might be obstacles. If He's telling you to go, go. Well, how am I going to defeat Him? God's going to tell you. He's going to show you how to do it. You just follow His voice. And if He tells you to go, go. But you choose this day who you're going to believe. You choose this day who you're going to serve. I choose to serve God. I thank God for the people that showed me how to serve God when I was young. But this is a whole new generation. I hope that the Lord has revealed so many things into me that are so different than what I was taught back then. So I teach those to you because I don't want you. If I can save you years of you going through some hell, well, I want to do it. Because what took me 10 years might take you a couple of days or a couple of weeks or a month. That would be a lot better than years. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. So that's what Jesus came to do. He came to teach us so that we don't have to go through all the... He said, follow me. And I will make you fishers in there. Let's go before the Lord and pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today. We thank you today, Lord. If you are in this place right now and you need prayer, maybe you have been bombarded by those thoughts. And maybe the enemy has put a, that fence around you and telling you that you ain't worth it and you're no good and you'll never amount to anything and that you're always a failure and that nothing's ever going to work for you. That it doesn't matter what kind of relationship you're in or it doesn't matter if you're in or you're not in a relationship. It'll never work because you'll never be no good. Or you'll never be good enough for anybody. If you are in this place today and your mind has been bombarded by all these things and thoughts and, and the enemy, you know for sure that the enemy has came in and just ripped you off. Took the word right out of your mind. And now you're having to pay consequences because of that. Would you allow me to pray for you? I want you to step up here and I just want you to stand right here right in front of me. And I want to pray with you.